Hey, Pisces, sun, moon, and especially most accurately rising sign. October is going to be a breath of fresh air. It's going to feel really like some stagnation and stuck places are moving forward. Thank you. Three planets moving forward this month. And for you, there's some specific juice in the sky connected to your ruler, Jupiter, as he goes into the sign of you at the end of the month and loves you up. And we're going to talk a lot about how this can bring you some better health and some meal optimism at the end of this month as well. We're going to address the eclipse that's coming and the full moon in Aries before I get and a bunch of other little things. Before I get started, Pisces, let me say this. This is an incredibly powerful month for you because you've been waiting for this Jupiter transit to come back to you. You've been like wishing and waiting for Jupiter, longing for Jupiter to come home to your sign. He hasn't been there since May. Believe me, you're going to start to feel good about your life, your health, your luck, your expansion. It is just like luck beholds you. You behold the luck upon you again. So we'll talk about all of that. But before I do, who am I? If you're new here, welcome. Please hit my bell for notifications and like and subscribe. I'm Lori Lothian. I am a sky reader who uses the codes of ancient Babylonian and Hellenistic astrology to decipher the true stories the sky is trying to tell you in your sky about your life. So let's talk about a couple of things. If you are unfamiliar with astrology, I will say your rising sign is what you need to be listening to first. Sure, your sun sign can work and your moon as well sign, but check out my description box to do a free tutorial video on how to cast your chart on free online software to find your rising sign and to also use the whole sign house system, which is the sign system that all online astrologers use when they do sun sign and astrological rising sign delineations. Okay, moving on to the sky for you. Although it is an end of month story, it is an important story. You know, Jupiter is the planetary body that's your ruler, your number one top dog, the guy that watches out for you, your fairy godfather. And he's the planet that has been out of your sign since May, about May the 10th, when he moved into the sign of Aries. And you've been missing him because he, when he's in the sign of your body and the sign of your rising sign of your identity, even near your sun or in your moon, things are buoyant. You're lucky. You feel faith and optimistic and hopeful. You are very commanding. People want to listen to you. You feel like you're on top of the mountain, top of your life. You feel like queen of the mountain, king of the mountain. It's good for you. And he's been gone. Where has he been gone to? Well, he's been working his magic the best he can up to the first eight degrees of your second house of earnings. And so in a way, that might sound like a really wonderful thing. Yeah, yay, Jupiter, my house of earnings. But he only made it to the first three degree, eight degrees, and then he retrograded into you know backward motion. Then what that means is that he hasn't really shown you his full hand on how he's going to operate and open up your money story and bring you greater earnings and seeds for new prosperity. He will do that later on when he comes back to Aries, right, December 20th. In the meantime. Here's what you're dealing with. Jupiter is coming back to the sign of you. And he was there, okay, all the way from well, January, February, March, April to, to about May 10th, right? Go back to how you felt then when Jupiter was sailing through his second big wave of time through the house of you. As a lot of you Pisces rising felt pretty swell, <laughs> you know, pretty good about yourself. Now he's back and he's going to be sliding backwards on when October the 28th and then until December 20th, he is in your sign. And on November 24th, he guys does go direct. So that's when you get lots more momentum. Now, if you are a Pisces rising in the last 10 degrees of Pisces, or your sun and moon is the last 10 degrees of Pisces, you will get the most blessings from this Jupiter back in the sign of you. Uh, early Pisces got it way back in 2000 and. 21 when he was in the first few degrees of Pisces for a little bit of time, I think up to the second degree, and the middle deacon got it in the second wave, you know, January, February, March, April, May of 22. And now it's your turn, late deacon, late degree Pisces people to get a lot of saturated Jupiter luck as he goes back to the 28th degree of your sign and he spills his radiant light at least to the 20, I say the last 20 degrees, you're all feeling it. Yeah. So is your sun, rising sun, sun, or moon anywhere there? in the 20 to 30, 29 degrees of Pisces, and you're going to love this time for you. 
But anyway, next, um, there's a lot of stuff happening this month, and I'm just sort of scanning my chart above me on the window to find things that I think are best for you, particularly, and then we're going to talk about some chronological order. Um, let's talk about, I'm just going to go with what, I, what I'm liking the most, right? I'm not doing super chronology here. But let's talk about some of the positive things that I'm seeing. One, I really love that you're going to experience that direct motion Mercury. I mean, as I said, three planets go direct this month. Mer it will be Mercury, and then it will be Pluto, and then it will be Saturn. But Mer Mercury will move forward in the house of your intimate, significant love relationships, as well, Pisces, as the business partners and clients in the marketplace for your wares that you wish to sell from your career or the audience you wish to grab for your whatever you're up to. And so Mercury in his home sign and the sign of his exaltation will move direct at the 24th degree of the sign of Virgo. So yeah, a lot of you late degree Pisces get the most juice from this. And he's going to do that on October 2nd. So if you've been feeling like, uh, you know, my relationship stuff has been kind of wobbly or my communications with my business partner or my work partner or my audience or my marketplace has been really stagnant stuck or I've had to go back over old ground or rethink those things. Now with Mercury moving direct on October 2nd, you begin to get momentum here and you really get to pick up speed. And good news is, you know, Mercury's a visible planet after the last day of September. So between him becoming visible and then him becoming powerful as he goes forward, you start to feel really spacious about the love and the relationship stories. And he will be moving between, therefore, October 2nd and 10th in that seventh house. So that's also not just where the momentum picks up, but that's where the intense, most accurate time is for the feeling of that momentum. Then he will move into Libra and that puts him in to your money and joint spousal house resources from October 10th to the end of the month. You may be very focused on mortgages, finances with your partner, ways to negotiate uh, uh, bank loans or credit card debt relief or things like that. Mercury will support you to find fair and balanced outcomes for the rest of October, October 10th to the end of the month in that area of your sky. When Pluto goes direct, right, it's a very slow moving planet. We barely feel it, but it does make a difference. He will go to direct at the end of end degrees of Capricorn in the house for you guys as a Pisces uh, rising folk that has a lot to do with your great gains from your career financially, your ability to influence others, your groups of social belonging in larger social circles. And he's going to move direct, which just means power and momentum return to this part of your sky. And if this part of your sky has been stuck or stagnant, things will begin to pick up speed as he goes direct on October the 8th onward. And for several months, this is once again, a yay positive part of your sky. Now, the other thing I want to know is that there is a full moon on October the 9th in the sign of Aries, and it's going to happen around the 16th degree. And for you, this is your money house. Now, this is where Jupiter is just leaving at the end of the month, right? But while Jupiter is still there, even though he's retrograde, there is this 16 degree new moon. And so you're going to find a I mean, full moon, full moon. And you're going to find if you go back to the first two weeks of April 2022, there's very likely something that you were doing then uh, regarding trying to tie up your financial story into something positive, set some new seeds for financial earnings gains. Sometimes you start a new job, right? Who knows? But there was something going on there that's now going to come into a full harvest vibe or completion or fruition something's fruiting here so look for some fruiting money stories for you starting around october the 9th as this full moon and add two weeks blesses this part of your sky and lights it up yay so it's a good money story for most pisces next um pluto oh i did pluto <laughs> next um I'm not covering every single story because um, we'll be here for freaking ever, but I am trying to focus on the highlights. I guess I will mention that Mar the Mars story, <laughs> Mars will square Neptune. So Neptune's in the sign of you. So Neptune's been there since 2011. It makes you more mystical, more magical, more transcendent, and more confused and fogged out than you've ever been. And 
Mars is pressuring that Neptune in what's called a square, a push and shove, a, a tension here that's happening around October 10th to 12th. And this is the first pass of three. It'll happen again on November 20th. It'll have as Mars is retrograding, it'll happen on March 12th as Mars goes direct. So this three part story seems to me to be about Mars ask, asking you about where you live. Do you need to change your home, renovate your home? Do you need to expand your home? Do you need to, you know, change your home. It's all about where you live, guys. Something going on here about buying, selling maybe, or changing or renovating a home. And this is what it is. And this is going to be a story that continues to plague you in some way between now and March. Hmm. Your fourth house ruler is Mercury. Mercury is also the ruler of your seventh house of significant partners and partnerships. So if you and your partner have been having negotiations or difficult conversations maybe when mercury retrograded about the home you're living in together this can be a story around october the um 10th to 12th where that discussion is beginning to pick up speed and get momentum because of course mercury stationed direct as i already mentioned allowing for full honest and transparent and powerful conversations around where you live all right um next there's so much going on I think what I want to talk about next is, I think I want to talk for you guys next about, I'm trying to go as chronological as I can without covering everything. I think I want to talk next about the Venus square Pluto. Not everyone gets this, but you do because Venus is the exaltation Lord of your sign. So Venus and Pluto can mean wealth and power. Venus and Pluto can be intense obsessions around love and like fatal attractions. Venus square Pluto can also mean things to do with um, having to come to terms with the death or complications from the death of a female in your life or the death of a friendship, all possibilities. And this Venus square Pluto will happen October the 19th. And it happens around 27 degrees of Libra, which is a house of death, FYI. So it could be really intense energies around secrets that are spilled, betrayals and fatalities, uh, love stories gone, gone into tension or obsession, um, things to do with money, um, where there's a lot of tension going on for you in this money story. Because, you know, <laughs> Venus in your eighth house and Pluto in Capricorn in your 11th house, it can be about how you need to come to square away some kind of financial tension with a friend or an elder sibling, the eldest sibling, in fact. Um, so many ways it can play out, but a moment of tension in your sky is coming for you around those themes of money and love, betrayal, uh, friendship, social groups, so social circles, etc. That's happening around October the 19th. Then Venus, since we're on the story of her and she is your exaltation lord and favors you and when she's in your house, you really like her a lot. And so there's a strong connection there. Is it October 22nd? She does her rare once every 200 year event where she goes into the heart of the sun at 29 degrees of Libra in your shared resources with your spouse, alimony, palimony, and bank loans and mortgages and inheritances. So for some of you, this critical moment on the 22nd is the beginning of a story that you may not see out picture, honestly, until Venus becomes a visible planet once again, which you will do in the beginning of December, like around the 5th, 6th of December. But it is planting a seed here of the next four years of your life until the fall of 26, indeed, where stories are going to be about your prosperity, especially regarding how you get money from investments, um, windfalls from inheritances, how you and your spouse or business partner can generate money, how you can create passive residual income, those sorts of things, grants, government grants, those sorts of things. So you're picking up some Venusian power because she's in her home sign. This is going to turn around your money story. Over the next four years, things get better and better for most Pisces rising, sun and moon secondarily. Late Pisces rising, last 10 degrees, you feel it the strongest. Um, but this is a story that's going to be operating throughout your chart for the rest of most of our lives. So, you know, this is going to be a part of your sky that is full of goodness. Venus is blessing that here. Most momentum between, you know, this October and next August, where she's showing you her full hand of how she's improving your money situation. And also your sexual intimacy, she can do that here, where your sex life becomes more robustly intimate and the connection levels up somehow with your intimate partner. All righty, um, I told everybody that three planets go direct and of course one of them is Saturn. Now Saturn has been doing a grind for the first two weeks of October as he's been 
squaring Uranus. And this is a, a story that you felt January, you felt last June, I mean, February of 21, June of 21, December of 21, this ongoing tension between stability, order, rules and laws, uh, restrictions like that, Saturn and and <laughs> Uranus rebellion, freedom, iconoclasm in your, so, you know, in Taurus. So for you, it's been a 12th house Saturn versus a third house Uranus. And this is playing out through the entire month, first half of October, the first two weeks of October, where you feel this tension regarding things to do with siblings, um, trips and travel, local neighborhood environment, and Saturn in your 12th house of your self-sabotage, self and doing. Now, this can be an elder person in a hospital. And um, it, it can often look like that Saturn can be elders in the hospital. So if you have elders in the hospital, and this has been playing out at all throughout 2021, and there's a final act, fourth act here that's happening in the first two weeks of August, where there could be a sudden unexpected development around someone in the hospital or someone ailing and sick who's a Senex, an elder, an old person. Or this could be a last breakthrough around a, a relationship with a sibling, aunt, uncle, cousin, or you just breaking through something to do with your resistance or challenges around things that you've been trying to get to work in your online world, your trips and travel, or your local neighborhood. Finally, the thing is, Saturn will go direct at 18 degrees of Aquarius. It's a very strong degree. This 18 degrees have been potentized all year long. And one thing I'll say is he goes direct on October 22nd and your hangups and holdups are releasing themselves. You are moving forward, getting over yourself in some way. And you may be moving forward so you can travel to see a sibling. A sibling may travel to see you. You may go off on uh, local adventures. You may change your neighborhood. A lot of you Pisces are looking at moves. It looks like your chart's trying to make you move somewhere by next summer. And this could be a new neighborhood rather than a whole new country or something like that. Uh, keep it all in mind. Um, although some of you Pisces South Node transit through your ninth house of foreign lands uh, have had difficulty getting travel to a foreign land for sure. Uh, so I think most of this is about your domestic environment. And I will do a very big, long video about the eclipse. It's going to be a lot more in-depth, but you must know a Scorpio new moon eclipse at two degrees of Scorpio, trining your ascendant, very flowing new change energy for you around things to do with foreign lands, foreign shores, higher education, court and legal situations, visas and passports. This is going to lighten up and loosen up this energy. It's going to, the, the eclipse is happening on the 25th of October. If you are a uh, Pisces and you're, sun, moon, or rising is in the first 10 degrees of Pisces, you get the most juice from this eclipse. It's a part of a larger eclipse cycle. But given the rest of your sky, especially with Mars and Gemini until like March of next year, this can be also about moving, changing home. And this eclipse could be a new beginning, new moon regarding where you live, what neighborhood you live in, or even what country you live in or where you want to study or what legal affairs are going to work in your behalf or whatever. Now, even though it's a South node, which is a le releasing, it's still a new beginning. So there's a new beginnings in this part of your sky as well. And perhaps even a new beginning to a father or father figure relationship, because it is a house of the father in Vedic astrology. And you see that elder or Senex, sage like elder person in your 12th house, maybe being ill for some of you, like a grandfather, grandfather figure could be ill. And this is an eclipse new beginning yeah october 20 october 25th but these new beginning of solar eclipses are also indicative of endings venus is conjunct this eclipse so she does bring some sweetness to it even in her debility or exile in scorpio so it could be actually very positive for your finances this eclipse if it involves a father father figure illness hospital themes of letting go moving or foreign lands okay or or things like that uh, lastly, Jupiter at the end of the month will, oh, I told you about that already. Yeah, you. Um, Mars will retrograde at the end of the month on the 30th of October. It's so much at the end of the month, it almost doesn't count. But just know he's going back over old ground in your fourth house. And he'll be doing that till January 12th, asking, do we want to renovate? Do we want to buy? Do we want to sell? Do we want to move? Do we want to make these changes in our home? Just be a heads up, Pisces. Mars in that fourth house, oh, August 20th to March the 
25th or so is a lot of fighting conflict and arguments in the home. So if you can diffuse some of that, that's good. And maybe October 30th with retrograde Mars, some of the home tension with the people you live with could be releasing. All right. Thanks for listening. Pisces, sun, moon, and rep, uh, rising sign. If you want to learn astrology, become your own sky reader, uh, do your own sky reading, be your own time, your best life, all that good jazz. And you're watching this before October 15th. See in my description box, you can sign up for my sky reader course, live classes, eight classes every week with a break for us thanksgiving and we'll be finishing in december come join us it's going to be a great class i love teaching astrology you get a ton of support from me a live facebook group and a community of people learning together beginner level astrology take care my dears have a wonderful october i'm so happy for you guys it's really a good sky it really really is <laughs>